videos, we are going to start to add some more realism to this or really uh, make this image pop by uh, playing with color and really pulling out shadows and highlights some more. So here we go. We're going to start by having our blurred background uh, layer selected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure all of these layers are labeled correctly. So that should be blurred background. This is the original protected Sailor Girl. So these two layers, we're just going to keep those um, protected down here. Uh, this layer up here, that should be the girl. So I'm just going to call that girl. Um, so we've got these two layers set here. I'm going to go ahead and add a folder here, which is actually creating a group. And a folder allows me to keep certain layers together. So these protected layers that I've got down here that I don't want to lose, I'm going to go ahead and drag them into that folder. There we go. There's that one. And then like the background layer in there as well. It may not let me, so I'm going to have to unlock it. Call that OG BG. Put that into group one. There we go. So those two images are in group one. So I'll close that. And we'll call group one protected originals so there's my protected originals okay here's the blurred background here's the girl so i want to start on this layer i'm going to go ahead and add a new layer we're going to call this layer orange glow there we go so I'm going to start by selecting my brush. So here is my brush. I'm going to go ahead and select an orangey color to match this fall scene. That looks pretty good in there. And I'm going to come up into the orange area up here, kind of light, not too intense in the orange, but so muted right about there. Hit OK. Now my brush is pretty small, so I'm actually going to select a much bigger brush. I'm going to go to a 2000 pixel brush. See what that looks like. And my hardness should be set to zero there. All right, there's my 2000 pixel brush. Let's see what that does. If I click there. OK, I just click just behind her head. And that's pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set that to screen. So notice it actually kind of lightens that background and it blends the colors of that orange brush with that background. <clears throat> I'm going to move that a little bit. See, that's okay. That's all right. Sorry, I might redo that. Uh, let's go. Put that dot a little bit lower there so it gets into that color. There we go. That's where I want the dot. All right, so again, we're going to set the that blending mode to screen. Sorry. Uh, this is my history palette. I was allowed to undo those changes. And then I'm going to set the opacity on this to about 65% to allow that to show the background through. Okay, so that's blending pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and add another. This is going to be Glow 2 or Yellow Glow. I'm going to go into my colors again. And this time, I'm going to shift this into the yellow area. We're going to go a little bit lighter. There we go. Select my brush. 
about 2,000 pixels. And again, I'm going to start right about just behind her tie here. Okay, there's that yellow one. We're going to have that one blend in as well. So this time, we're going to set um, the opacity to 40%. So I'm going to click here, put it about 40%. And with those two together, there we go. That's going to create a nice background look to it. Okay, so now we're going to click on the girl layer because we're going to add a new layer above her. We're going to call this Dodge and Burn. And in this layer, we're going to do something that's kind of interesting. So follow along here. We're going to fill that layer, edit fill. We're going to fill it with 50% gray. I keep kind of watching here. So in this layer, we want it to only affect the layer below it in the shape of it. So in order to do that, rather than creating another layer mask, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this layer and I'm going to hit create clipping mask. And as you can see, without me having to add a layer mask or um, cut out pixels from this layer, it's got this arrow now pointing to the layer below it, which tells me that it's using this layer as a clipping mass and since this layer only has the girl showing that means that the gray is only going to show where the girl is it's kind of an interesting quick way to mask something out is to use a clipping mask that uses the layer below it all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set that gray layer to overlay and by choosing overlay it actually looks like it's doing nothing. But the way this works is that in the gray areas, it doesn't do anything, but we're gonna start adding some lighter areas and some darker areas. And anywhere it deviates from 50% gray, it's going to begin to um, lighten or darken that part of the photo. So I'm gonna zoom back in here. All right, there we go. I'm zooming back in, I'm going to grab the Dodge and Burn tool, okay? So we're gonna be using Dodge and Burn, which is a way of lightening the exposure and darkening the exposure, in order to lighten and darken certain areas of her face and her neck. So we're trying to add three-dimensionality. So the first thing I wanna do is add a deeper shadow under her neck. Notice her cheek is not separating from her neck. We're going to go ahead and use the lasso tool to try and outline the area we want to focus on. Okay, just get it pretty close. We only want it to affect the neck. That's pretty good there. Okay, and we're going to take our burn tool, which is going to make it darker. I'm going to set the exposure to about 25% so it doesn't darken too fast. And on this gray layer, if I start to burn, you'll notice that it's actually deepening the shadow beneath her neck. So I'm going to take it to about there. I'm going to deselect that. And now she's got more definition along her cheek, right? Her cheek is popping out, her neck's receding a little bit more. That gives it a little bit more dimension. All right, so now I can actually do the opposite. Since we created a shadow, now we're going to create some highlights. 
Again, I'm going to take my uh, exposure to about 25% so it doesn't change too fast. I'm going to zoom into her face again here. I'm going to change her brush size. You can do that with the left square bracket. Shrinks the brush size. So I'm going to go ahead and add some highlights along her hair here. I want to give some dimensionality to this. Imagine you're kind of a hairdresser adding highlights to this woman's hair. Making the hair pop and have dimension. I don't have to worry about going outside the lines because that clipping mask is keeping me from messing that up. Okay, nice. All right, so we've got some nice dimensionality to her hair. I'm going to increase my brush size again a little bit here, and we're going to pull the highlight into her chin again here, and her cheek, her nose, and her brow. Finish off that edge. All right, so she looks <laughs> a little fakey there, but uh, we're being kind of surrealistic here. We're going to add some highlights along each fold. So think about the folds as things that have edges that need to pop out, right? So anywhere there's a nice fold, we need to separate that from the shadows beneath it. So I'm coming along all these little folded edges and bringing in some highlights. It's going to be subtle changes because you're working at 25% exposure, so it's not going to brighten too fast. But it will, in fact, brighten just enough. We can bring out her tie a little bit more. All right, now her dress, if we look at the base of it, it's not really casting a shadow on her legs, so we need to darken it. So I'm going to come back to the burn tool, change my brush size a little bit here, and we are going to paint just underneath there to give the skirt a little bit of a shadow underneath it. And that should be enough. I may have gone a little bit too dark in that one area right here, so we'll try to brighten that back up. All right. So let's zoom out. And she's got some dimension. Uh, her face is a little bit dramatic there. Um, and so what I can do is reduce the opacity of this, make it a little more subtle. I can also blur it a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and add a Gaussian blur to try and make it a little less obvious. 
where I've painted. I'll go with about 3.8, it says there. Okay. A little less clown makeup y. I think we're at 78%. I'm going to take that back. It's nice and subtle right there. I think I'm at 60% roughly. Okay. So at 60% opacity, that's only affecting the layer beneath it so much. And we can see some nice, subtle additions of highlight and shadow that add dimension to her face and her body. All right. Stay tuned. Yep.